Hello, friends. Welcome to the F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. I'm your host, Hiroja Shai. Hello, ah, uh, this is Hiroja Shai, and this is uh, a wonderful podcast exploring the world that is the television show of Mr. Robot. I am the host of the podcast which is called F Society RRC Podcast, a review with the Mr. Robot Show, if you just didn't know. <sighs> so, let's discuss. Well, that happened. Well, that happened. Um, this is Rosa Scheib. This is F Society RC Podcast, a Mr. Robot Review Show. I'm your moderator of this channel, and this is my review of episode 411, Exit. Um, as I stated in my live reaction, uh, we have moved way past HTML codes, and we are in an entirely different territory right now. Um, Exit does, like a lot of the episode names of Mr. Robot, does have association with computers. I mean, it's you exit a program. I mean, much of the computer world has borrowed from the real world when it comes to terms to make it uh, user more user feasible and things of that nature. They're not necessarily made up imaginary terms um, for the purpose of the you know the creation of a new system. So, <clears throat> whew. Um, so. I'm going to give accolades to the again to the people that were true believers in believing that the Washington Township plan is actually the machines actually works. Bought into the whole white rose philosophy of a new world if you will. That the the con job as price says was in a con job. Uh there is you know a time travel parallel universe alternative timeline. If you were if you were for that again uh true believer okay you 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 stuck with that uh, uh but i i don't believe in a world where darlene doesn't exist so i am like some people thinking that maybe we're not really in a parallel universe maybe elliot's dying and we're finally seeing the third altar this magic reality that this third altar his prime personality lives in to not deal with the trauma abuse that he experiences in, in childhood but also just the trauma and abuse of, of the world where he lives in this perfect existence if you will and the Elliot we have been seeing the unreliable narrative narrator of our story has popped into that existence and is I guess shattering it and going to bring that prime Elliot to the council of Elliot's I I don't know what the end game is in there other than to become whole and accepting of the things that have happened to this particular character but it will be fascinating to see what happens for the series series finale um, it's two hours they're put together uh, it's been a long time since I've seen a proper TV movie, which is very fitting with the show that the series finale is two hours. I mean, I know other shows have done that where they combined, you know, parts together and they're two hours. I just, uh, it, it, I feel that it's probably designed like a TV movie because um, that would be something this MSML would do. Um, the show, if you're unaware, Mr. Robot was originally pitched as a movie. Uh, Sam Esmail wasn't able to get it done as a movie, but he broke it apart into four seasons for an episode. He's had the series finale planned out. Uh, that's something that a lot of writers are doing now. I, I think you can say the trend started with, uh, I know I'm not saying his name right, but J. Michael Stanowski, the creator of Babylon 5, who basically had the whole five uh, seasons of Babylon 5 planned out uh, of course he made some adjustments when you know cast and crew and things of that nature changed and shifted but the essence of the story was pretty much planned out 
Um, other shows have done that where they've done, you know, seasons planned out, but from the beginning to end, a, f a few shows, like I think Breaking Bad has pretty much had their story arcs planned out. Sopranos to some extent, but the whole, from the very beginning to the end, uh, I guess you could say when something is adapted from existing material, pretty much most of it's planned out. Um, like The Stand, um, which is an upcoming um, television show, but like Game of Thrones to some extent, up to probably like season four was pretty planned out and then they went off book and went from there but he's Sam is not stated that it's not gonna go sci-fi but maybe he's using sci-fi as an allegory and like I said maybe this is all in Elliot's head and I'm hoping they stick a landing because I don't think the fans of Mr. Robot are gonna be perturbed or pissed but they'll just be disappointed, I think. They'll be disappointed if the landing is not a stick because the journey has been so great so far. And I, I, I truly believe that they're going to stick the ending. But some of the worst series finales was some of these shows have fell off before that. Like, you know, Lost is one where people were just, oh, they were in purgatory the whole time. Like, ugh. House of Cards. Uh. Star Trek Enterprise with the whole holodeck episode. Ugh. Twin Peaks. Some people are not happy with either version of the show's endings. Of course, Game of Thrones. True Blood. That's a show that's really fell off. People talk about Seinfeld all the time, but they never talk about the the ending of that show. That show's ending was very divisive and nobody talks about it. People like kind of like, ignore it. Um, Battlestar Galactica, again, was another show that kind of sort of fell off towards the end, and this, 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 the cyclical nature, I, I guess, if it had been done better, I think it would have worked, but, yeah. How I Met Your Mother, pfft, some people forget the whole entire last season of that show, with a series finale, even, meh. Dexter, another one, pfft. Heroes, but, but that was a show whose quality diminished pretty much, I think pretty much after Brian Fuller left that show, but which he did like season two. Uh, Scrubs, again, last the last season, nobody talks about it, but they talk about Scrubs all the time. Vampire Diaries, yeah. uh, Felicity and her weird like last five episode timescape thing. And uh, depending on like if you were was it Ben and Noel? How you were on that is how you feel about it. But at the same time, I think it's one of those shows where at the time it was very divisive. But if you watch it again and you're a little bit older, maybe you have a different feelings about it. It's one of those sh one of those series finales that I think actually kind of age well. But that's just my opinion. Um... But yeah, so those are, you know, series finales that didn't quite stick to landing, if you will. Some of them are shows that kind of fell off before then, so the, the quality of the show had diminished by the time the series ended, and that's pretty much why they were wrapping up. Um, some of them were, you know, were still very good or had great potential. You know, Star Trek Enterprise got it canceled. I think they were actually really going there with the whole Romulan and Vulcan stuff that some of it got incorporated into... Uh, Discovery and looks like they're going to incorporate Picard. Very interesting stuff going on there. But, you know, for the most part, these are shows that didn't stick their landing and had like a pretty strong, rapid fan base and got pretty upset. But there's other shows that kind of have stick the landing. I personally like The Sopranos ending. Um, Breaking Bad had a great ending. Uh, let's see. The New Heart Show, very old show, had a great ending. There's other shows that have had good endings and have been very satisfying for people. Um, but the genre stuff, you know, genre television shows have been notorious uh, for not having the best endings. Uh, Star Trek Enterprise, not Star Trek Enterprise, but Star Trek Next Generation had a really good ending. Z Space Nine. I think everyone, but I would say, except for, you know, the original Star Trek got canceled, but... Um, Enterprise has had really strong uh, series finales that many of the fans were satisfied with. 
So, let's talk about this episode. Uh, we opened up with a different perspective of the ending of Darlene and Elliot parting, where, you know, Darlene was going to say, like, hey, I'm getting off of this exit. I got my girl. We're going to escape, go to Budapest. Of course, we know <sighs> that didn't happen, but they did have satisfied endings. Um... So they parted ways and, um, you know, it was a little weird thing where Darlene actually said goodbye to the Mr. Robot personality, which is a weird thing. And that's been a big issue of the series is whether or not Darlene sees the Mr. Robot personality. I mean, she definitely knows he's present in Elliot, but the actual figment version, if you will. Um, but they parted ways and Elliot has decided that he is going to the Washington Township plant and he's going to take down White Rose's machine. Mr. Robot is there. He's trying to convince him not to go, saying that if he does this, all it is is another, there will be always be another mission. You know, we've won. Let's move. And Elliot argues that fundamentally this is the whole purpose of why they were doing what they were doing. They, they have to take down this machine. Which is a thing that has always bothered me about the series, about how Elliot wasn't quite aware of the full extent of the Washington Township plant machine, and that White Rose was not involved. Um, and we'll get into the White Rose a little bit. Like, she really opened the episode, but we'll get into her in a second. I think this is very important. And there was, in essence, a divide, if you will, between, again, a growing divide between Elliot and Mr. Robot about what to do next. And you can see members of the Council of Elliot in the background and Elliot finally acknowledges their kind of their existence, if you will, a bit more openly. And he's like, you know, you can go with them. I, I have to do this. And he um, walks away and walks the apartment, basically leaving everything. And he has a basically a USB thing that he was holding during the um, 410 Gone episode, and he's going to use that device to basically take down the software of uh, White Rose's machine. And he's going to the Washington Township plant, taking a bus, and get going to Jersey, if you will, or another part of Jersey. Um, for the most part, it's pretty much just Elliot and White Rose and Mr. Robot. Uh, for the most part of this, in this current existence, before we jump to the alternative world. And for White Rose, we open up with her, and she's, she's putting herself to the nines. She's wearing her dress, the dress that she said that when her um, machine shipped off to the Congo, this is what she wanted to wear as acknowledgement of her victory, if you will. And, um... <clears throat> You can still hear the gunfire with the FBI busting in. And uh, then there's, the gunfire stops. And a member of the Dark Army opens the door, and wearing the mask and everything. And White Rose walks out, walks down. And it's the scene we've seen from the very beginning of this season where the previews where White Rose is walking down the stairs and there's a bunch of dead bodies and it's a bunch of dead FBI agents. And the only thing that bothered me was I would think there'd be more FBI agents outside. It wouldn't just be an HRT or SWAT team just coming in to come get her. Um, that's the only thing, unless there was like a full-on battle outside and we just didn't see it. Um, quickly, White Rose has escaped. Um, <clears throat> but there's a significant scene in there. Um, one of the FBI agents is dying and she, she, she leans down and says, you were looking for Minister Zong. And Minister Zong is dead. The only thing left is White Rose. And then walks out with such grace. And then the FBI agent gets killed by a member of the Dark Army. And that was the opening, the a complete actual opening of the show. And it just, it speaks volumes because um, one of the key factors or motivations of this character was that White Rose has never been really permitted to live her full existence because of the society she comes from, the society as a whole, 
uh, it was just not possible for her. Uh, she's she gives her speech to Elliot. She lost a lover. She's she lost a lot of things to try to achieve this goal of existing in a world in which she can be her full self. Um, so you know we we do get to see her again because Elliot and her do actually meet, which was something that was never supposed to happen again. So there's not really much dialogue except for the, in this part of the episode, except for the meeting between White Rose and Elliot, and we'll get to there. But uh, Elliot, you know, he gets on that bus, he's going to the Washington Township plant, he finally gets to, into the, to the main part of the city, He's walking by, he walks by his father's, the location to his father's um, Mr. Robot store, which we know is now um, basically the a, a bank front for ATM thing, I think, for um, E Corp. And he basically is walking towards the nuclear power plant. Uh, I found it very interesting as <laughs> we're walking and we're seeing the background that there are certain things that TV shows do to show the, the decline of a status of uh, of a township, and one of them is like graffiti. Like there's graffiti on the welcome sign, and you know the police are hassling a homeless person. I, I think that's such a trope, but I don't know if it was deliberately done because it is a trope, and to emphasize maybe like kind of the fantasy element that we might be experiencing here at this moment. It just struck me as odd. So Elliot walks basically all the way to the Washington Township plant, which probably is not that far from the town itself, so it wasn't much of a walk. And as he gets there, there's uh, three vehicles that just book the hell out of the place. Just pfft, and odd, distressing. Alarm bell should be going off. So Elliot walks up to the gate and there is no security. And it's pretty much wide open, which is not something you should be expecting for a nuclear power plant. And uh, he keeps walking. He keeps going towards the plant from the gate to the plant main entrance. Um, shout out to Mark Qual, who has been doing the music for the entire series for the entire time. Uh, he just, you know, there's been a little bit more pop songs this series or season, if you will especially these last couple episodes, and the music just uh, was just fantastic. Um, so Elliot gets in, and it looks very distressing. There's disturbances all around. It's like, yeah, Elliot, you probably should get the, the fuck out of there. Uh, obviously, something's gone wrong, uh, but he just keeps going. He's walking through the corridors, and then... He finds a particular room. Uh, I guess he might have already had the map out of the location. He gets in as a series of cubicles. He goes to the first cubicle. The computer's on. Nobody's around. He just sticks the USB stick into the into the computer and lets the program run. And then he, you know, is all finalized. And then he hears the police sirens, which should be what should be happening. Okay. The plant got taken over, obviously. Something's happened. The police are there. He goes and he looks out the window and he sees a massive police presence uh, appearing, you know, sirens. Uh, he's walking around and he's, you know, he saw a dead body and before he went to the window and I was like, God damn it, Elliot, get the fuck out of this building, okay? You did your job. The police are here. I'm sure there's an exit you can get to before they surround your ass and <sighs> nope our favorite side character if you will for the longest time was an NPC you know he he said nothing just was always there he was the one that like you know from Zelda or you know Mario or any game he always just kind of gave you the things that you needed and then bounced or you bounced from him Mr. Hamburger guy all dressed up in white eating his hamburger surrounded by the dark army and he says oh you don't belong here. <laughs> and uh, they uh, escort Elliot to um, White Rose, basically, the meeting. And as you're walking by, and they have the bombastic music for this, you know, slow walk towards 
doom. Uh, you see all the dead bodies of people just getting shot in the head, right and left, scientists, secretaries, janitors, just dead bodies here and there. I mean, the Dark Army just went to town. Uh, no survivors, again. I think this is the most death count since um, the 71 buildings on the show. Uh, so, I guess they're making up for the lack of death on Gone. So they get into this room. Elliot's escorted to this room. It says something about, um, you know, warnings. You know, uh, there's a, you have to have basically ear gear because it's 85 decimals, like really high, loud noises that could damage your earring. Um, Elliot doesn't get any hearing gear and goes into this room. And it's very similar to that of the room that Angela went to when she was taken to that house. Um, it's all black. There's a fish tank. There's a poster. It says one uh, when the, the door closes, a window opens, and there's a bird that flies out, and like a dove, if you will, which is, you know, maybe hinting the fact that, uh, you know, Elliot threw himself out a window. Um, there's a computer, desk computer. It has a, an Apple II. There's a book, uh, Reflection, a Resurrections. This is the name of the title. I think it's a, I forgot who the author was. And is a book we've seen in the series of the past. Is a book that Mr. Robot has um, read. In fact, I believe he was reading that book when he pushed Elliot off the pier um, all the way back in season one. And so Elliot takes everything in and then here comes White Rose. And White Rose, again, this I know Rami Malek is um, playing a Bond villain in the uh, No Time to Die. I think is the name of the new Bond movie. But damn it! Oh. If BD Belong, I mean, is not up there as epic villains list. Okay, I'm I'm gonna be very, very upset very bad villain. She just comes in and she's like, normally, you know, I have someone else do the introductions before I come and make my, you know, my entrance. And I, I, I think of like, like a really proper, proper white rose entrance would be like, like from uh, Kill Bill 2, that walk that um, Lucy Lou does with her, with her minions and that bombastic music, that slow walk. Like I imagine like the person who does the introduction is like uh white rose's hype man if you will and she's coming in like a you know like a proper rapper if you will like a proper gangster coming in with the bombastic music and the, 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 the confidence and swagger coming in but it's a it's a more sedated white rose if you will because it's the end game <laughs> And they start having their kind of battle of wills. You know, Elliot's like, this bullshit you're doing here is not going to work on me. I know it worked on my friend Angela, but it's, you know, what? The computer had a kid. The fish tank, you somehow got QRT, my fish, <laughs> if you will. Uh, the um, <clears throat> the book my father used to used to uh, read to me, you know, bullshit like this. This is, this is not going to work. I, I know you tricked Angela. You're not going to fucking trick me and white rose is like i'm not here to trick trick you elliot i'm here to show you you're gonna get a choice um you yeah. know and they start having a conversation of they start having the conversation about each other's purpose if you will in this whole yay and White Rose explains how she really doesn't like this world. She doesn't like the people, the places, the things. She she is seeking a better existence and she has achieved that. She's achieved her goal of creating this machine and it's going to happen. The, the changing, if you will, of going from this world to a much parallel world, if you will, and Elliot's arguing, you can't, you can't do that. You're not giving people a choice. You're not giving them a choice about being part of this. You're going to kill people. 
and White Rose is like, kill people? Look what would you have done? You know, they kind of pointing at each other, you know. You, you want to save this world? You, what is the name of your group? Fuck society? You did all this, all this, you know, and you're supposed to be some great savior? And Elliot's like, you know, yeah, I fucked up. Okay? Yeah, it was fuck society. Which, with this final speech towards White Rose, uh, it's uh, fuck society, fuck God, fuck me, and fuck you. If there was a fifth season, I would say fuck this. But um, it's, it's still a nice completion of speeches for each each season, if you will. And he's like, yeah, I, you know, I really fucked up there. You know, I, I did kind of lash out society, but there's people in my life that no matter all the shit that happens to them, all the horrible things that you're talking about, the, the world that didn't allow White Rose to live her full existence, her true existence, you know, this is why she's doing this, where she couldn't be who she wanted to be because of society, that she wasn't born the way that she should have been, and she has suffered for it. She lost lovers, she's lost so much, and, um, Elliot's like, yeah, there's lots of people out there that have lost things and lost things and lost people and lost lovers and lost status or and couldn't be who they want to be, but they still hold on to hope. They still try. They still care. They still love. And they come to you and even though you push them away and you fight against it, they try to build you up and bring you back to some sense of sanity, some sense of love. They still care. They still fight for you. Uh, even if you don't want it. And it's because of these people that he is where he is today. Um, the people he's lost. Uh, particularly his sister Darlene is one of those people that has helped him um, persevere, if you will. And by White Rose, basically, as, uh, is indicated by the, the noise turning on the machine. Um, Elliot's like, you know, fuck you for doing this. Fuck you for denying people's choice because you have you you were in pain and you got hurt. You know, you're gonna melt down the world basically. Um, and Elliot's trying to convince her just to turn off the machine to stop it because he has a software program. And White Rose is like, yeah, um, but we already had the machine on in the first place and. Yeah, I didn't want to melt down the world here. That's why I wanted to go to Congo. But you were here and you did your thing. And now, you know, I have no choice but to activate the machine to its full capacity. And Ellie's trying to convince her as the, the noise is shaking around. And, you know, she does something that when they first started, you know, she came in with a box. And you have that whole joke of, what is in the box? What is the box from the seven? And she avoids the question as she does her little villain monologue. And it's a very emotional monologue, don't get me wrong. It's it's very heartfelt and you feel White Rose's pain and you're almost you're almost convinced to be on her side, really, about society, about her not living her existence, her motivations. You you believe that she has created a machine that's gonna bring people to a better world a world free of this anguish if you will and her mocking of Elliot of his position of trying to save this world like she said she says don't make me laugh you you done more damage than anybody to this world even more so than I I who have tried to build up and save these people with my machine and the things that I have done um, the sole purpose of saving humanity you know and Elliot's position is, I'm saving humanity from you from not giving them this choice and this is the world we live in kind of a position. And when White Rose, you almost forget about the box. When White Rose opens the box and you see the gun, you're like, oh, fuck, she's going to kill Elliot. But she doesn't. She says, I'm going to give you a choice. You're the one who's going to make a decision takes the gun and blows her fucking brains out and i was like oh
well, we're fucked. <laughs> I was like, that's how I Rose goes out? And then I thought about it, and I was like, well, yeah, that's what the Dark Army does. They, they, they kill themselves. That's her exit. Just, and I'm like, <laughs> oh. And I start panicking. Like, Elliot's panicking. Like, he has to get out of that goddamn room. Because the plant is melting down. <laughs> he has, and he he's looking at the keypads. So he can't figure it out. Mr. Robot pops up <laughs> to protect and save Ellie. He goes, we need to figure out the code for this, for this keypad so we can get out of the room. And he goes, go to the phone. There's a phone on the desk. Go see if there's an outside line. Let's see what's going on here. Elliot picks it up. And just like in Angela's... Um, scenario that she experienced is a disembodied voice and it starts saying a number if you will in different a series of numbers in different um, languages uh, English being the first one as it repeats and so he has the number he, he lets Mr. Robot know Mr. Robot opens the door uh, he goes okay there's a cord down here we can go and Elliot's like Yeah, but the computer is on, and she wanted me to make a decision. She wanted me to get out. I gotta shut this machine down. I think this computer can do it. And Mr. Robot's like, are you nuts? Are you nuts? And the answer is yes, but are you nuts? The the plant is melting down. It's a nuclear power plant. You can't shut this shit down, okay? It, it's a series of things that have happened. Uh, you can't stop it. Um, have we not learned from the tsunami that happened in Japan, which is 2014, about nuclear power plants, Chernobyl? Okay, great. Another great series. Uh, you can't shut this down. But Elliot is convinced he can. And so he sits down dead body right next to him white rose and he starts playing this text adventure game and then asked him you know uh you and her friend are in this room you have to there's a door is blocked you know how would you do you move this uh you go through the corridor your friend can't go uh with you uh your friend's i guess dying your friend has you a note you take you take the note um but you don't take the friend he goes through a series of choices until he gets onto a beach, and then there's a there's a uh, a boat that allows you to escape. Do what you do. He gets on the boat to basically escape. And for a second there, you think that's the answer because the Washington Township plant. You know, you hear a big click off, like a big machinery clicking off, and everything's quiet. And you think, okay, he played his little game and that shut the machine down. And then it asks you, do you want to play again? And Mr. Robot's like, let's get the fuck out of here. And Ellie's like, no. There's something else. I'm missing something. The, the itch that's always in Elliot's brain about I'm missing something. So he plays the, the game again and says, you and your friend are trapped into in this room. And he goes and asks you, what do you do? And he goes, I sit down and talk to my friend. Your friend hands you a note. He grabs a note. This time, um, because he couldn't read the note the first time because he was in a dark tunnel, he, he lights a match. And it says, um, don't leave me here, friend. And Elliot sits there and he's like, and... The Washington Township thing starts going back up again. And Mr. Robot opens the door and there's a fire. Like, they can't get out. And... They're sitting there. You know, because he had a choice to make. Do you stay or you go? And he stays with his friend. You know, he reads a note. And... I found it very interesting because I thought, well, why, well, why can't you take your friend through through the tunnel and like, drag him through? 
if you'll take them with you. Like, why wasn't that an option? Um, because that's the way I would done. I would like, I would take my friend with me, carry my friend on my back, and we will get out of here together. Um, but he decides to stay. And the Washington Township plant starts shaking, and it's obvious it's about to freaking blow. There's no exits. This is it. He's sitting down on one side of a computer, Mr. Robot's sitting on the other side of the computer. And Elliot tells Mr. Robot, I love you. Mr. Robot says, I love you back. And then he says the first line that Mr. Robot ever said to him, which is, interesting times that we live in. And then it's a big flash of red. And then we pop into this alternative reality. And I don't know what to make of this scenario. Like I said, it could be all in his head. Um, there could have been an explosion and Elliot's trapped and dying. Um, uh, I know there's so many safety features to a nuclear power plant to prevent the great catastrophe. Like there's not going to be a big nuclear plume in the township, but there'll probably be like something that goes straight down to the ground and just ekes out radiation, spreads out that way. But uh, there's still probably some explosion and damage, you know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was just, it was just so bizarre. It just, such a bizarre scenario. Uh, you know, he meets White Rose, they have their uh, monologue off. Uh, White Rose kills herself. They're trapped in that room. They play a text adventure game. He once again tries to save the world and fails. Uh, yeah, it was just, I, again, I, I think we'll get our answers uh, in the TV movie that this, this happens with the series finale, but it was just, it was interesting. It was very dramatic. It was great acting. Again, this, I, I hope tar, towards Emmy time. I know Rami Malek got a Golden Globe nomination, but I hope towards Emmy time that this, this show really gets his accolades because they have been putting some stellar work. The actors, the cinematography, the set designers, the wardrobe, fashion, music, writing, directing, lighting, all of it. Um, supporting characters, just, uh, So we're in an alternative world. Don't know if it's in Elliot's head or White Rose's machine actually work. And when we pop up, it's Elliot's apartment, but it's different. It's like sunny. It's like sc scrubbed of all the darkness and ickiness. And it's Elliot wakes up. There's an alarm that goes off and he's waking up and it's like 1116 when the alarm um, goes off, which is an important time in the, the series, um, 1116 pops up a lot of different places within the series. Um, not positive completely what it fully meant means. That's one of the things I have not mentioned um, in my reviews because there's so much stuff in the background. You're just, you're really unsure until you get the answer. Like the giraffes for Angela or um, the different books, uh, the the artwork that is in the background like I mentioned when uh, Leon and Elliot uh, meet in that cafe it kind of looks like Elliot's family in the background in that big ass picture um, the beach town cover it the the hat looks like the hat that um, Elliot's mother wears in a picture that he has of his mother beach wear uh, it's just just odd stuff like that you're not quite sure positively what any of it means but you, you notice it and he wakes up and he has an alarm and uh, he has a record player he's playing a record he has an Apple computer not he's not using Kali Linux uh, he gets ready he takes a shower he's singing songs playing music it's like who's this Elliot he dresses like a, a corporate stooge he gets a phone call Angela's alive. Um, their fiance, which draws back to the 
the first season with that dream sequence where they were kind of dressed up like they were going to a wedding, which was their wedding. Um, she's his fiance. They're going to get married the next day. She's asking him if he's ready. He's supposed to pack up. There's boxes in the background, but he hasn't done anything. And they have a conversation and talk. Uh, there was an earthquake. This is why she called him. She goes, did you feel that earthquake? He goes, yeah. Do we have earthquakes in New York? And she's like, I don't know. And it was just interesting. And we find out later, a little bit later in the background of a newscast that the earthquake centered around the Washington Township area where the plant was. Um, so Elliot goes about this. This Elliot we're seeing goes about his day. He goes to Allsafe, which he's a CEO of. Uh, I forgot the character from season one. Um, that was kind of Elliot's partner there. Uh, they have a conversation. Elliot approaches him. He goes, he goes, do you have the deck? I need to make sure it's ready for the E-Corp presentation. And he's looking at him weird. What E-Corp? You mean F-Corp? And he's like, yeah, F-Corp. And... Uh, so E Corp is F Corp. He looks at this, uh, a screen and you see in the background like F Corp and it has like the Apple logo and the F, like the color lines, if you will. And you see a glitch where it goes E Corp to F Corp. So something's off with this world. You kind of already know it already because it's just too damn bright and sunny. Um, too clean, if you will. Too perfect. Um, Ollie comes over, still being a douchebag. Um, <laughs> Elliot just kind of exits out of the conversation there. Um, it's just a weird take on the the first season of Mr. Robot. He's the CEO. He's making a pitch to F Corp, and we hear the he's making his pitch. You hear the voice of Tyra Wellick dismissing everybody. Just kind of like happened the first season, if you will, but with Kobe doing it. And Tyra Wellick is there, and he's just like a Silicon Valley do bro. And a little depressive too, bro, if you will. Hoodie, barely shaved kind of deal. And he goes, Elliot, you know, I, I don't think we, we're going to be a best fit. And he goes, well, you know, they're trying to, he's trying to get it back together. And he goes, you know, you know, I, they have a conversation, this weird conversation about whether or not Elliot is on Tyler Welk's side and, he, and Elliot's like, yeah, I'm totally on your side, dude. You know, I, I've seen a vision of your company. I know what's going to happen to it. And Tyra well, looks like, you do? You, you know what's going to happen? Yes, yeah, in this in these printout proposals I got here, you know? And uh, Tyra asks Elliot a, a very important question. He goes, you know, what's wrong with your life? You know, is there anything would you say is wrong with your life? And Elliot has answered to say, well... I'm in a loop. I, I go to work, I do this, I do that. It's kind of boring and dull. And I wish, I wished, you know, I was a bit more exciting, you know, take more risk, but that's, that's not what I do, <laughs> you know? And that was like, like, okay, okay, okay. And it was just a weird conversation. Like we feel like maybe Tyra Wellick that we're seeing knows there's something off in the world and we see that Elliot was aware of that. But he, he said the same thing to Elliot, you know, yeah, I feel like my world is a little too perfect, a little too neat. And it's weird. It's, it's odd. And, but because of that perfection, you know, people trust F Corp for all their things. And I can't mess this up. And El that's when he goes, you know, Elliot's out. Be on your side. I know what needs to be done. I can totally protect F Corp. So I'm assuming he got the F Corp. Yeah, we, he did celebrate with his father when he meets his father. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. Um, but it, it's, you know, you're you get in the sense of a repeat of the first season, but in different situations, and I guess in this very different world. You see a, a news report in the background where a white rose, um, Zizan, I guess a feminine pronunciation of her uh, name. Um, she has a White Rose Foundation. She's a big philanthropist, giving money all over the place, saving the world. 
Uh, she's here, she's there, she's everywhere. She's just great and fantastic. And so you see White Rose, I guess, living her best life. Um, so, but the world is still off. And one of the ways the world is off is um, back in Ellie's apartment in the very beginning, after he got the conversation with Angela, the, who's now alive and is his fiance, he calls his father, who is alive, and is dressed, and is he's still working as Mr. Robot, but he's kind of like, looks like a geek squawk type of deal. He's at the computer store, and I guess somebody had come over, he didn't have his phone or whatever, and he goes into the place and finds that his phone actually gets done conversating with Elliot. Um, they're going to meet up. There's this big surprise that um, Elliot and he are doing for Angela. And that's like the, the book that he and um, Angela loved as kids. He's giving the first edition to her. He's going to drop it off her apartment. He actually goes to her apartment when he does this. Um, leaves the present, some flowers. Notices something odd about... Um, I think there's blood and glass or something like her parents roll over and just little odd things and Angela's like where are you what are you doing he goes oh I'm just you know I'm checking in you know how much I love you things are going great things are good and stuff like that but Elliot meets with his father they have the conversation he gets the gifts and he forgot his wallet which is weird for him. Like, he's been, like, apparently everyone's noticing he's been off all day. And the thing about Edward Alderson is this is an Edward Alderson that obviously didn't do the things that the other Edward Alderson had done. And it made me wonder, because the character, um, Christian Slater, was aged up, you know, to appear the passage of time. Um, if this Edward Alderson is actually Edward Alderson, a better version, or the Mr. Robot creation in Elliot's head. It was just, I couldn't figure out, but I, I just can't look at Edward Alderson the same way, even if Edward Alderson is a, a good person in this universe. It just, yeah, I, I, I can't. And it was just a weird dynamic. The whole time was like, ah, Elliot just... He's not a good person. Leave. Leave, Elliot. Leave. Run. Run. There's just something not right. Something off. Do something too perfect. I, I don't care if this is a perfect existence, perfect world. Just leave that person, you know. But that's not, you know, they leave. Um, the big deal about this whole alternative year in the universe is um, when An Angela and Elliot were having that conversation, the first conversation about the earthquake and checking in with each other and being praising about the wedding was is revealed that he's such an only child that he has no other siblings um you can see that from when his father picks up edward alderson picks up his phone cell phone in the, the store and he i guess he left it in his little cracked screen it's just him edward alderson um elliot's mother magd and just elliot that's it no darlene So it's just a weird world and if you look in the background it's just a little sunny a little clean version of new york a little clean when you walk around he's just it's just so super clean super bright um so this elliot goes back to his apartment and when he opens the door there's our elliot sitting at the computer the apple computer and this Elliot goes, who are you? And that's the end of the episode. So it's like this weird 20 minute alternative existence, ex existence, if you will, where Elliot lived a better, better life, if you, if you will, where Angela's still alive. He was an only child. His father's alive. Didn't do those things. I guess his mother's alive. Maybe she didn't do the things. Um, Angela's mother is alive. Um, he's a CEO of a company, Tara Wellick's alive, they're about to be best bros, if you will, uh, everything's perfect, everything's great, and he's not a part of a hacker group, there's no dark army, White Rose is this big philanthropist type of person, and 
yeah, it was just weird. It was just super, super weird. And if you're of the belief that, you know, Elliot has gone to a better world, then who's our Elliot? Why is he there? Oh, is he supposed to fight his doppelganger? I, I, I don't know. Or if this is in his head and he's dying, is he supposed to, again, fight his doppelganger to merge as one? It's just, I don't know. We're, we're going to get those revelations when we see the TV movie. It's just, whew, it was a lot. I'm going to miss this show because this show makes you think about so many things. I I know I'm going to watch the series again. I might have to like wait a little bit and digest the whatever the ending is before I go back and watch just so I can like savor it so I can enjoy um, the show in a totally different manner with totally different perspective and I think it'll be fun. I think I'll be like, okay, clue, 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 clue there and stuff like that because I kind of like that kind of stuff. But at the same time, just just marvel at the this different journey. I, I guess you could say when re rewatching the series, it's kind of like rereading a book but at different stages. Like when you first read the first Harry Potter, uh, depending on when you read it, you might have been in middle school or high school. Um, in my case, I was... Uh, in college um, I had like I guess the third book had come out or something like that and I finally read the first book um, you know my perspective has changed from when I when I reread it as I get older I notice different things and different dynamics things that kind of sort of bother, bothered me at first but really bothers me now or certain things I didn't you know really fully understand like the whole kind of Snape toxic kind of relationship Snape has with Harry or the fact that Harry was very abused um abused kid like you really fundamentally understand the level of abuse that he was receiving um which is something like you know when I speak to people that were just you know three or four years younger than myself when they're reading the book because uh, they were in high school or middle school or something like that when they first read it you know just a few years you know their perspective changes as they get older and realize certain, you know, things of grown-upness, if you will. Uh, and there's other books like that, like Huckleberry Finn. I see, I see it differently when I saw it as a child. I saw it as a great adventure story. Um, when I was in high school, I saw, like, the weird commentary about slavery and uh, childhood relationships and adulthood. And then as I grew older, I appreciate the fullness of the story, you know. Different stuff like that. I, I think this series is one of those few series that is very much like that where <clears throat> as time progresses, uh, you will see it in a different different viewpoint, if you will. It is almost like a like a book. You're gonna see different things as time, you know, as you view it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so this is almost it. This is the end. This is the exit, if you will. Just one more review and they're done. Oh, I still have to do 407. I just, I don't know if I can bring myself. I, I won't do it. It'll just have to be after the end of everything. It's just, it's a diff difficult episode to review for me personally. Um, and then I got to knuckle down and see if I can get that Washington Township plan is the ultimate MacGuffin out. But that's it. It's been an enjoyable time. Uh, I'll talk to you guys again. I will do a live reaction for the series finale, the TV um, TV movie, and then I will do my review. But um, this is Rosa Shine. This is FSI RC Podcast, a Mr. Robot Show. I'm closing the channel, and till next time, friends.